All right. Um, thank you, everyone, for being here. And this session, in this session, uh, we're going to discuss some potential uh, optimizations for heavy THP users. So um, first, I want to start with some fun facts. Um, I know uh, there's a CPU vendor that's uh, been planning to remove 4K page size support in the uh, next decade. So I'm not sure if it's confidential information, so I'm not going to name that vendor. Uh, but you can quote me on it. So also, uh, macOS on Apple Silicon uses uh, 16K page size instead of 4K. Also, uh, Windows on uh, IE64 used 4K page size, base page size. Yes. Uh, IE64 um, did or does support 4K page uh, base page size. So, but they, they just uh, chose not to use it. So also at Google, uh, our Power9 servers, uh, also our Power8 and Power9 servers used 64K page size. So on Power, um, it supports 4K, 64K, and so on. It, it does not support 16K, just in case you wonder. So also we are experimenting with 16K base page size on Android. Um, that's uh, ARM-based Android. So here I have a um, proposition. So basically, I think, that's my opinion, 4K page size is suboptimal uh, sub for modern user space. And also for some architectures, like uh, x86, doesn't really support other base page sizes. right? And switch into a larger page base size, for example, um, from 4K to 16K or 64K on ARM breaks EBI, right? So here um, I would like to say a forward-looking OS, I'm, I'm just speaking generally, would offer the opportunity to favor larger logical page, pages over 4K based pages. So I, I not, um, say in THPs because I'm trying to be uh, general. So such an OS would be able to treat 4K base uh, page size as legacy. Just like, you know, 32 bit on x86, 64, right? And, but it would not require larger base page size support from hardware. So otherwise we would not be able to do it on x86, which is the majority, I think. Um, market segment. Uh, also, it would not break ABI. So here's uh, my proposition. Also, uh, why, why I'm um, um, seeing this? Because uh, you see, when was 4K page size were invented? At least on uh, x86, it was four decades ago, right? So. Even back then, it's still questionable. This, this decision um, might have been still questionable. Why, why 4K, why not two, why not eight, right? So, um, so I think some people uh, are late, so I'll just uh, um, leave in uh, this uh, page for a little bit longer for you guys. At least the mix. A little bit of sense, right? It's not totally nonsense, right? All right, I'll move on. So um, my rationale is um, favoring um, THPs. Now I'm, I'm, I'm specific. I'm talking specifically about the lens kernel. So favoring THPs over 4K pages uh, would bring um, better overall performance. That, that's you know the system-wide throughput. We're not talking about the memory uh, usage or memory utilization, right? And also, um, it br would bring uh, less metadata overhead, so either by HOV or uh, mem disk. So also, uh, 4K page allocations would uh, need to be fairly um, pa uh, penalized because um, they are the source of fragmentation. And on top of that, 
defragmentation um, comes with a, uh, with a cost. Either we would have to uh, reclaim or com uh, uh, do compaction, right? right? So um, also, uh, fragmentation can be irreversible unless it's con it is contained. So um, our existing policy, I would call it best effort. That means um, for a system, unless you use huge TLBFS, if you use THP, then um, there's really, uh, the worst case scenario would be no THPs on this system at all. So um, based on the um, previous um, proposition, we, we can uh, invent a new or a different economy, right? So this is uh, what um, my entire um, presentation is based on. So basically, um, it, this new economy or this different economy explores the opposite side of the existing economy. So for the uh, existing um, economy, so it's, it's cheaper to, relatively cheaper to allocate uh, 4K pages, right? And also when we split the THP into, when we split a 2 meg THP into 512 4K pages, it's cheap because it's in place, right? So also, when we collapse um, 512 4K pages into a 2 meg THP, we have to copy. We have to um, copy you know, those uh, 4K pages, data from those 4K pages into a new um, 2 meg THP. So it's relatively expensive. So the opposite side is um, you know, what I uh, listed here, and uh, I'll explain why later, so in this page. So I call this, uh, fungibility. Basically, it makes the conversion between uh, 4K pages and THPs uh, flexible, right? So also, um, during the conversion, rather than uh, bias against THPs, uh, this uh, different economy bias against 4K pages. So basically, if you use 4K pages, you're going to have to pay more, actually, right? So. Um, when we do, uh, when we convert 512 4K pages into a 2 meg THP, so we can do it in place or out of place, right? So um, in place might not be possible. Out of place is always possible, of course. So the current uh, economy is, we call it, the term is collapse, right? That means we copy uh, data from those 4K pages into a new THP. So we, it is possible also to do um, in-place collapsing. Let's say you already have 5, 11, 4K pages in place, right? You just need to copy one 4K page. You, 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 somehow you are mapped um, this one 4K page in um, a um, previously um, um, THP. Previously, this region that was a THP, and then you are mapped one 4K page. Right, and now you want to recover this THP. So you wouldn't, you wouldn't uh, really need to allocate a new THP and then copy 511 uh, 4K pages into the new THP. You just need to um, make sure that those 511 pages are still in place, and then if the unmapped 4K page is uh, free, good, you can just you know, do the uh, recovery in place, or if it's not in place, but uh, it's, it's occupied by a new allocation, and that new allocation is uh, movable, you can migrate that uh, movable um, 4K page, move data from that 4K page, occupied 4K page, to a different 4K page, and then recover this um, THP in place, right? Also, for um, the conversion from a THP to 4K pages, then you still you also can do the um, the uh, out of place um, conversion, meaning that when you uh, split the teach no I don't, I don't, no that's not split right when you uh, do the conversion you copy five twelve um, pages of this THP into a bunch of uh, different five twelve um, pages, right? And doing so um, can keep the original um, physical um, space intact, 
right? You still have a um, two meg physical space there. So another uh, process, let's say another high priority process, can reuse this uh, physical area as uh, to reallocate this um, physical area as new THP. So. Um, One more note here. Um, recovering is mainly designed for one, one GBTHP. Because otherwise, uh, if we just use the existing uh, CLAPS, we would have to copy uh, one GB data from uh, um, one uh, area to a different area. So this is obviously uh, unaffordable for many uh, potential use cases. Right? Uh, in, in this uh, slide, I want to talk about some uh, allocation time hints. So how exactly do uh, we want, how exactly we can achieve this uh, new economy here, right? So as an allocation time, we know whether uh, an allocation would be moved or not. Also would be uh, whether it's, it's, it's a, a um, compound or not, right? So the uh, GFP movable, is a strong is a stronger condition than uh, GIP compound because um, the former makes the latter possible by doing compaction, right? By move by uh, moving a bunch of um, movable pages into another area, we can uh, create a uh, physical area that can can be used for a uh, new compound page. So if we assign uh, weights to these two conditions, right, or two hints. We can say, okay, movable um, has a weight of two, and the compound has a weight of one. So we can um, come up come up with this two by two uh, uh, matrix. So basically, then we can um, have a um, preference here. So we would uh, say movable compound is the best, is the most uh, desired um, allocation, and then uh, our movable. A order, uh, order zero on mobile allocation or on mobile order zero allocation would be the least desired, right? So if we want to create a uh, fallback mechanism, we would go from A to D, right? So also, um, why a high order a high order um, on mobile allocation is better than a um, order zero on mobile allocation? Just imagine the uh, extreme, right? I want to allocate some uh, mobile memory. Let's say it's one gig, right? I can just use this one gig physical area. I would not create additional fermentation here, right? But if I try to allocate one billion, no, one billion, you know, um, how many? So um, 512 uh, multiply uh, 1,000. Two, two yeah, okay. Uh, 4K um, unmovable pages, then those pages are likely to be uh, spread over the uh, entire uh, physical address space. So that would be actually, ha that would have more uh, fermentation, right? So that's why a high order uh, unmovable allocation actually is better than a uh, order zero unmovable allocation. Multiple order zero unmovable allocations. So also, um, it, it is theoretically possible to um, gather runtime hints, right? So at least uh, currently we have no way to predict lifetimes of our mobile allocations, but it, at least theoretically it's possible. So we can sample an allocation site by recording the um, pages um, we allocated for this uh, allocation site and the timestamp, right? Also, uh, by allocation uh, side, I mean uh, the cost stack, right? We, do, we uh, don't have to really uh, save the entire cost stack. We can just use the hash value, right? So then we can calculate the lifetime at the, when we free this page, right? So basically we know, okay, we sampled 10 out of 1,000 allocations from this allocation site. And uh, based on those samples, we can tell um, how long, how, what's the average lifetime from this from this uh, allocation site, right? And what's what's the highest? What's the lowest? So, and then we can group our mobile allocations by their estimate lifetimes. So let's say you have a long time uh, long lived 
uh, move allocation. And you have you have bunch of long lived allocation. You have a uh, move allocation. You have a bunch of uh, short lived uh, move allocations. Right. You can group uh, these two into two two areas. So the uh, latter, which contains short lived uh, move allocations, can be reserved. And then later on, you say, okay, actually all the um, existing um, uh, mobile short-lived allocations are gone. They are all freed. Then I can use this new area for something else. Let's say THP, right? So based on this, we can better um, bin pack um, the um, um, uh, mobile allocations. So this is another ongoing research project at Google. So um, next one, uh, I want to uh, talk about uh, how what 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 the role the user space could be, right? So or, or what uh, user space would expect from the kernel? So fragmentation is only observable, or or at least uh, or measured uh, system wide currently, right? So uh, if we have a low priority task, and this low priority task uh, allocates a bunch of uh, uh, movable uh, memory, and then pages, and then this um, low priority task actually can make a high priority task that uh, has been trying to allocate THP is fail, right? Because basically this is a priority inversion. So also, um, let's say we want to isolate the uh, fragmentation between these two uh, tasks. We would want, we would need to uh, have per memory group, we would need memory group, right? That, that's the that's, uh, most intuitive thing to do. So then we would uh, uh, need um, per memory C group observability, right? So based, because this um, would be very useful because uh, on many systems, let's say Android, right? We have a bunch of uh, um, background apps. Those background apps are cached. And when um, we cache those apps, we think, oh, how about we save some memory? We just use I'm device page out to um, reclaim all the uh, IRL pages, which are movable. And then what about the uh, mobile um, allocations this background app uh, made? So there's, there's no way we can tell, right? How much and uh, how, how much the uh, mobile allocation this, uh, this uh, background app uh, currently uh, is using. Also, the uh, mobile allocations this background app um, is using can actually um, prevent a foreground app from allocating um, THPs. So there's really no point for this um, background to be there, but we just think, oh, what if we just, we just uh, cache it? We, you know, if, the, if the user somehow later use it, then we can reduce the uh, startup time. But um, there, there's some, there are many uh, side effects there. So um, also, uh, THP uh, fungibility needs to be a cooperation between uh, user space and kernel, because uh, um, there are many runtime behaviors we cannot really uh, account for in current, in current space, right? Like hotness, lifetime, and we, we might be able to estimate lifetime based on the, um, the previous uh, research products that I just mentioned. But also, uh, user space ha would, might have better tools to do that. For example, user space can do um, profile guided uh, heap optimization, right? So basically, it, it groups, um, PGHO groups uh, allocations by, by um, pre by profiled, by, by uh, estimated hardness and lifetime. This is um, profiling based. So also uh, to better utilize physical uh, contiguity in the system, for example, we want to use um, uh, one GB uh, trees, right? We would have to have some um, new M device um, operations or uh, new, new M device uh, flags to do this. Because uh, I personally don't think uh, one GB can teach me can be um, completely transparent, right? So there, there, there can be a high uh, allocation latency because we have we have to clear the uh, this entire one GB area. There's also a high potentially collapsing uh, cost because we have to copy, right? So um, based on all the uh, just you know, um, things I've talked about, we can just uh, see what we actually can do 
in kernel space to um, address uh, the current uh, concerns or to improve uh, THP uh, coverage, right? So um, previously I mentioned that uh, fermentation can be irreversible, meaning that unless you have uh, a uh, hard walling uh, mechanism or policy that can hard wall between um, or can isolate the, uh, 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 fermentation, then eventually uh, a system can end up with no THPs at all. So um, memory partitioning, I, I, ha I have a um, image here to uh, nicely illustrate the idea. So uh, basically, we want to create a new uh, partition for THPs only, right? So this new partition would provide guaranteed THP coverage. And also, um, to contain the uh, fermentation caused by 4K pages, we would have to apply uh, differential pressure. That means for the uh, 4K uh, page partition, we would have to uh, let it experience higher memory pressure. When, when the system experiences uh, memory pressure, we would have to say, okay, because you are doing, uh, you, you can cause, the 4K allocations can cause fermentation and I would, you would have to endure higher, higher memory pressure because otherwise, um, your, uh, the fermentation can be uh, spread to the different uh, partition, right? So um, I have also, go, go, go ahead. So th this 4K is movable, unmovable both, or just unmovable, the, the partitioning, hard volume? Uh, it depends. It depends on the fallback order I mentioned here, because uh, yes, this is a very good question, because if, let's say, um, depending on how we partition memory, right? If the fallback order says like, you only go from A to um, D, then you actually don't really worry about, you can group A, B, C into a same partition, right? If the fallback order says from A and B to C and D, then you, are, you would have to um, uh, restrict, uh, you have to, uh, say, okay, allocation from this new partition have to be uh, movable. It depends on how, where, where you draw the line. If you draw the line between A, then this partition can only contain movable compound. If you draw the, draw the line be, uh, between B and C, then also are movable. If you draw a line between C and D, then are movable also possible. So where should we draw the line? Um, I, I would believe that we should be able to allow users to draw lines between all these conditions. It's possible to do the A and B. You already have, have movable, right? You just need to add, you already have D. D is just normal. B is just the movable zone. I, just, I don't want to talk about the zone right now because that's, it's not important, right? Because I want to be on uh, a uh, very high level thing. So let's say we use zone to do a partition. You already have movable. You already have yeah, no more. You just need to add two zones, B and C. So why a uh, mobile compound is, 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 uh, a in, is an interest here because uh, network is used a lot for that, right? You, so a lot of times they uh, try to use uh, 64K on mobile pages, but uh, somehow they cannot allocate them. So this would be able to speed up um, network and GPU. Also, uh, DME buff uses a mobile compound page. Right. And of course, they fall back to D, because if you try not try to allocate a mobile, uh, a mobile compound, if it fails, then try to just order, try to allocate, allocate out zero. So, <coughs> going back to the the hard walling, you said you expect this to be uh, kind of a static or more for dynamic uh, the the sizes between these partitions. You are too too far ahead. Okay. Well, I'll be there in a minute. So yes, a uh, uh, very good question. It'll be, uh, it, can, it can be, d depend on configuration. It, I think um, to, for, this use, for this to be um, user space friendly or user friendly, the, some kind of auto resign has to be done. Right, so uh, I have this table here. So um, it basically this is the pros and cons of uh, the existing approach, and this is a new uh, approach. So for the uh, existing approach, yes, you, you can, you can uh, 
uh, have a better um, density or memory utilization, right? You can, you can pack a lot of cars on the uh, right side, but you, you guys have to move really slow, right? That's a problem. And on the, um, for the system throughput, you know, which I'm not sure, which depending on uh, use case, can be better actually, because let's say if you let the, um, if you uh, meter the, uh, if you install a ramp meter, basically you say, okay, you guys cannot go on, all go on to highway and then jam there, right? You, it's kind of, you know, you guys go first and you move quickly and then the next bench can go on to the highway and then move fast, right? That, that's so, where exactly it would be the uh, optimal point, I don't know. But I can tell, but I, I think of, I can tell for sure that have everyone on the highway definitely cannot be the uh, optimal case for all cases, right? And all conditions, I mean. So then, um, naturally, we would have to ask how do we uh, set the size for the, uh, the sizes for these two partitions, right? So here, um, I have some um, very uh, rough ideas. So we can have a uh, globe, we can have global min and max of the TCP partition. We also can have, uh, in addition, we also can have per memory secret min and max for the uh, allotted size from the THP partition, right? So the first one uh, guarantees your system-wide throughput. Basically, you have guaranteed THP coverage on this system, right? But it does not uh, prevent a high priority, uh, low priority task from using more uh, f uh, physical uh, contiguity, which is considered a resource, or THPs, which, is consi which are considered resource, right? So with the per mem CD, min and max, we can prevent priority inversion. Basically, we say, okay, this is a bench job, or this is a background app, whatever. You cannot use um, um, that many THPs because uh, you know, you're not doing much or you're not important, right? So also uh, resizing uh, would rely on hot remove or the hot plug. So we remove um, part of uh, um, a pit blocks from a um, more memory from, t from a partition and then we add it to another partition, to the other partition, right? So shrinking the TCP partitions is at least theoretically uh, guaranteed. You can always succeed because um, TCPs are always movable, right? We're not talking about uh, movable command uh, allocations here. We're not talking about THPs. So uh, then, just, can I ask a question quickly? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, when you say 4K pages and THPs, do you mean strictly like two make THPs or do you mean all compound or MTHP allocations like anything above uh, order zero? So uh, all THPs, including MTHP, including here temp S. But, but why is order zero much worse uh, fragmentation wise than say order one? Uh, what do you mean? I mean, like, order one is not much better than order zero, right? Or we don't have, do we have order one THP? We don't have order one THP. Yeah, we do now. We yeah. do now? <laughs> yeah, that, that's why I'm asking, like, okay. where do we draw the line between bad and good allocations, I guess? Uh, so, um, basically, you would have, uh, on a system, you would have a um, primary uh, THP size, right? So for for uh, client devices, definitely it's not too mag. So I can tell for, for Android it's either 16K or 64K because uh, ARM either, uh, we either use HPA or Con PDE, right? For Intel it's 32 because AMD uh, supports um, continuous um, count blocks or, or continuous, uh, continuous PDEs, I don't remember the name. And uh, for servers we really, we really use two Mac or one gig. Go ahead. So, I mean, there's, there's, there's what the hardware supports, and then there's what would be the optimal size to use if we could, if, if we had godlike powers and could see everything that the workload was going to do. Mm. Um, it, it has always been my intention that we try and become as close to God as we can, and, and analyze the workload and, and, and see just how, you know, what, 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 what is the optimum software size for this particular workload. And so I really do think we want the flexibility. I built that into all of the, the mm -hmm. page cache stuff. I understand that from an anonymous point of view, we just don't collect enough data. It's really hard to collect the data that mm -hmm. would let us know what the right size should be for this workload. Mm -hmm. But I don't think that should stop us from trying. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so I, I, I think we are going to want something a little bit more flexible than what you are describing here today. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily need to do that like, mm -hmm. within the next year, but mm -hmm. we should be thinking more flexibly than, than what you're presenting here. Mm -hmm. So um, on this part... There's, al there's also a, a slap, right? Um, slap higher order could be, depending on how the objects pack down, could yeah, be something that isn't necessarily 32K or something, right? Could be smaller, order one, order two. You, you, you're absolutely right, Johannes, but uh, those aren't tagged as movable, so we can distinguish them. But don't, I mean, don't we need a, a solution for those as well, right? If we just say those are the least desirable um, pages in the system, so they go in the, they go in the bad area. <laughs> but then we can't guarantee any kind of contiguity for them. Actually, uh, to my third question about the uh, data for real life workload, actually, I'm, uh, we have done some uh, benchmark on Ampere Ultra platform for some uh, typical um, popular workload, for example, uh, cache, uh, kernel building, uh, some uh, video encoding, and we collected some data. I'm going to talk about that uh, in my session after lunch. So hope that the uh, data is helpful. Yeah, um, all, all, all good points. So um, I think there might be a confusion here. So when I say THPs, um, I, uh, two partitions, you know, one THP partition and another 4K partition, right? Uh, I didn't really mean um, a um, specific order, right? I mean a minimum order, right? So uh, let's say you want to use uh, order one and beyond, then I, I would say so this THP partition would set to order one at least, right? And you can order, you can, you can uh, allocate order one, two, three, four, doesn't really matter how large you want to go. But the catch is you still have to do compaction. Right, so it's, it's you because in this partition you don't have really have a movable uh, allocations, but you if you try to if you set the minimum order to one, if you try to order uh, allocate one GB, you have to do a lot of compaction there, right? It's, it's a, would be uh, more likely to succeed than the current uh, than than a uh, mixed system, but you still have to do work. But if you know that, oh, my um, main order is, let's say, nine to Mac, then I would just set, set the order to nine. That save a lot of trouble. Because, you would, because if you, you only use uh, two Mac, you wouldn't need to do additional uh, uh, compaction anymore, right? So I think, um, so here, the one parameter, which is the main order here, for the uh, TCP partition, it's not the specific order. So of course, you know if you, if you set to to, to, to one, <laughs> what's the point, right? It's not really much uh, uh, larger than order zero. User space, right? So um, also, I don't know any system that actually are using order anything like smaller than 16K for THPs. Do we? Do we have any systems actually that, that use um, order um, no, 8K or anything? Order one is used by the page cache now. Can be. Can, can be, but I mean, can Yeah, I'm really just echoing what Willie already said. The page cache now supports order mm -hmm. one, and I think there are use cases by Luis that will make use of that and mm -hmm. like require a minimum order of one, if I understand correctly, mm -hmm. in some cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For anonymous memory, not yet, maybe never. There are some problems to solve. <laughs> mm Yeah, I, I, I do agree. If we were to add a uh, specific order, then that would be too uh, restrictive. 
So uh, then uh, more, more on this one, this two, partitioning and uh, size and resize. More questions? No? OK. So um, then as I said before, uh, auto resizing probably is also required, because otherwise we have to move a lot of work into user space. And uh, that's, uh, for my, my, uh, in my opinion, is probably not uh, the most user friendly way to do things. Right, we want everything work, uh, work out of the box. And also, uh, auto resizing basically can be, done, can be uh, based on um, memory pressure or differential um, pressure from the two uh, partitions, right? So why we have to apply, uh, we, would have, we would have to allow higher memory pressure on the uh, 4K um, partition because otherwise we would not be able to uh, counteract the fermentation there, right? So, so it's basically, it's like uh, you, you, you try to, um, let's say, water, uh, tap water. You want to install an RO, uh, RO system, right? You have to apply additional pressure to this RO system, right? To filter, uh, to, to filter out uh, things that you don't want to drink. This is similar, um, uh, in theory, is something very similar. Basically, you want to reduce the entropy Right, so you have to apply more pressure there, or extra work there. So um, also uh, memory pressure in the, uh, because we are talking about uh, um, hard warning, potentially hard uh, warning, right, between partitions. So if we hard wall the partitions, then uh, memory pressure in the 4K page partition can actually uh, invoke the own killer. Right, even if the uh, TCP partition has no pressure at all. So this, this is just like, um, let, let me use a zone as an example. This is just like the DMA zone, right? So if you are out of memory in DMA zone, you're gonna trigger uh, uh, zone based, uh, uh, this uh, would trigger some own kill there, right? Even you have additional memory uh, beyond the DMA zone, you, you cannot use it. This is very similar. But of course, this, this is not a hardware limitation. This is like software uh, or user uh, space uh, imposed uh, limitation there because we, we, we just, we'd rather uh, everyone uh, move fast rather than you know, uh, every, uh, the, all the cars get onto heavy and then jam there, right? So also for some major platforms, let's say Android, um, out of memory kills actually are not really that bad because we, we on Android, we, we cache a lot of uh, apps, in the uh, background apps, right? And uh, um, if we just leave them there and they uh, hold some um, our mobile uh, allocations, they have some allocations, then they actually can, um, this can actually uh, make the foreground app slower, right? So also on Chrome OS, we also have tab discard. Basically, uh, you only when you use browser, you only have one foreground tab. All, all other tabs are background, right? So something called tab discard basically is something like I, um, we discard every, all the content in that tab. When you, when you switch back to that tab again, we reload it. Sometimes you can see that, actually. You switch back to the uh, old tab, then, oh, where, where is it reloading? Because it was discarded because uh, the system will uh, experience memory pressure. It's called tab discard. So of, also um, for uh, um, data centers, right? Let's say uh, we use Kubernetes, right? We have uh, uh, real-time jobs or high priority jobs. We also have batch jobs, right? So we, it's, it's, when um, the system and the memory pressure, we have two um, options, basically two options, right? We can just say, oh, okay, you guys just try to figure it out. You can move slowly. Right, you, everybody runs slowly, and uh, but you you can all, all finish. The other option is I say, oh, you you are a batch job. Why why should I keep you here? I I could just you know um, preempt you or own kill you, and then later on you can reschedule, right? I'll let the uh, high priority job finish first. So this is something um, we would have to consider um, um, for auto resizing because. If we don't consider this, we just let all the resizing do it by itself, eventually the, the, the TCP partition uh, would diminish. Then there's really no difference between the, um, between the, the current system and this um, 
uh, separate uh, this two partition um, system, right? So um, we um, uh, just, uh, we, I think uh, one of our partners, Android partners, uh, uh, collect some data for us. So with uh, the uh, latest kernel, I think uh, MTHP, uh, with the latest MTHP patches, if uh, we just um, turn uh, 60, 64K uh, allocation MTHP on, then we can see after about five hours, the um, the the uh, MTHP uh, not MTHP uh, fallback uh, allocation fallback uh, um, uh, now is like over ninety percent. That means every time when you try to allocate sixty four k MTHP, you actually get four k instead, right? So uh, initially, it's, it's, this is two uh, you see two lines here. They are really close, but after five hours, you see the difference is is pretty large here. So. In this case, we reserved 15% of uh, system memory, eight, which is uh, eight gig uh, bytes, as a, as a teach, as for the uh, THP partition, right? Also on Chrome OS, we did something similar. So this result not uh, not from a large scale EB experiment. So just um, take it as grand thought. So these are all local benchmarks. So on Chrome OS. Um, uh, we also um, did some local benchmarks. So basically with uh, 32K on AMD, and we, we saw some improvement there. But under, when under memory pressure, so the allocation, uh, uh, the uh, 32K uh, MTHP allocation uh, failed a lot. So we used 30%, we reserved 30% of system memory, which uh, if I remember correctly, is four gig for um, the uh, THP partition. So um, actually there is about 10% improvement with uh, type switch time. Of course, we are talking about systems under memory pressure. If you have no memory pressure, that means you have unlimited memory. That means you obviously can succeed in allocations, right? Go ahead. So uh, question on, so in these experiments, uh, did the, like you see ohms and were the ohms able to help? Particularly like my, I'm kind of uh, like, you have pressure in 4K or THP. Mm -hmm. You want to kill something which will help to reduce that pressure. H how do you know which to kill? Oh, that's not a, uh, my job. That's user space <laughs> job. That's not a kernel job because as I said, we have actually uh, user space managed ohm kills. So, so here in your experiments, uh, so here user space knew that uh, I should kill, discard these steps. It will release and uh, the pressure for the THP or the other. No, no? unfortunately, no, because uh, back to this uh, here, we uh, where is it? Oh, here, because we don't a uh, user space doesn't really doesn't know really, um, yeah, how how, how much. Uh, 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 how many THPs or how many uh, on mobile locations uh, the background apps or the background tabs actually uh, currently uh, have. So out of the box, uh, kill helped here. How, what? Uh, out of the, whatever the current existing OOM behavior, you're saying it helped in these experiments. So basically, um, I think uh, Suran uh, can, can speak for um, yeah. Android. So basically, Correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah, because so, when more when more allocations uh, take longer or fail, basically you s you get a higher PSI, and that basically hint for the user space killer to kill. So you naturally, if you are limiting the area from where you can allocate, you naturally get higher pressure, and that higher pressure results in more kills. Is the policy different? No, the policy sh should be the same. Just to repeat the question, uh, so what was the policy with, with the tau and without the tau for the user space zoom killer were different or? Yeah, no, when, when we compare, we need to make sure that we are comparing apple to, apples to apples, so we are keeping the same policy. Were there more tabs killed or were, was it consistent? On, on Android side? Yeah. Yeah, on Android side, there were more kills, of course, because we, we get more pressure. More pressure, okay. Because, yeah. And um, can we track what the optimal size would be? Like, if you find out you're, you're not able to do this, 
then could you fall back to a lower size, basically use the fragmented memory or yes. does it? Okay. The answer is yes. So we could scale it up or down as well? Yes. Okay. So that's uh, where uh, I was going to talk about it. This is uh, the fallback order here. We, f we go from A to D. So basically, if you try to get a THP from uh, the, the, okay, I'll talk about the problem later. So if you try to get a THP from the THP partition and you failed, you still can, you still might be able to get THP from the uh, four key partition, but you have to spend more money, you know what I mean? You have to um, reclaim compaction, right? So here's another problem. This is, a, in my opinion, perfect. The problem is you try to get a four key page. Right, you have THP, you have memory in the THP partition. You try to get a 4K page. Uh, sorry, maybe, maybe I wasn't clear. Um, can you change the THP partition size dynamically? Yes. Okay, so you can say, have it set to 32 and you find 32 isn't working, so you can drop it to 16? Yes. Okay. No, no, sorry, yeah, no, the, the order of each allocation of the THP. So, the, the order is just a runtime um, so the order, check. So the order they is... They say, oh, can, can I give you something? No, you go back to the, uh, fall back to the uh, uh, 4KB partition. So, so there's a very simple check there. Right, so there's two fallbacks, right? Or there's one fallback then from, from THP to, to uh, order zero or your base order or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. And so your THP order never scales up or down runtime-wise. <laughs> It can scale up and down, but it would only take effect for new allocations. Yeah, that, that makes sense for sure, yeah. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Scaled up and down by user space, right? Yeah, so because it's one parameter in page allocator. You check whether I can, give, I can, try, I can try to allocate from this partition, right? It doesn't matter, you there, there's even no risk condition there because if you change the on, on the fly, then that's okay. So right, you feel right, this right. time, let's say I, I set the new value, right? You didn't see it because of uh, cache or whatever, uh, ordering problem, uh, order, you know, uh, memory barrier, whatever. The next time you're gonna see this. Well, what, what I mean is that, so the kernel does not automatically adjust the order. User space has to intervene and change the order. No, 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 the kernel does not automatically adjust the order. Okay. You have to set it. But the kernel does change the size of the partition. Yes, okay. that's the auto resizing. So I'm guessing that implementation detail is going to go into UMD. So you're going to change it via UMD. You, UMD will is user space, and it will see things are getting killed, so, and it may see that, or you could potentially tell it that THP is failing, so you could change the THP uh, order based on UMD feedback. Is is that the plan, or? So um, I I don't really have a plan for this. Um, Auto uh, reducing. You are talking about auto reducing or, or, or increasing the order, right? Yeah, auto reduce or, or scaling up. Okay, thanks. Because because uh, uh, as I just asked, uh, we don't really have um, existing system that actually use more than two sizes, THP size. So if we have yeah, like uh, something we can, I can test with or play with, we definitely can. You know. Find, I can find someone uh, from our team to look at it. Yeah, I think if we we'll, if we have like a signal because of which allocations we actually fail, so uh, we actually had to kill, is it 4K or basically which partition, based on that we could readjust like how we divide those partitions. You mean the order or the size of partitions? Whether I can serve a different order so or let's smaller, say, let's or smaller let's say order Let's say we get yeah, let's say we got a high PSI signal, right? And we killed as a result of that. Was it, uh, was, did we get the high PSI because we are uh, starving on the THP partition or 4K partition? So you need to know that information so that you can resize appropriately, right? Up or down. Uh, not really because you cannot get high PSI from the uh, THP partition only. You can only get high PSI from the uh, system-wide pressure or both partitions because you can fall back from the THP partition to the 4K partition, right? So if you can't get a THP, you fall back, there's no PSI there. You still try to get a, a bunch of 4K pages, then you still can get that, then you get a, actually um, PS, a PI, high PSI there. Johannes, did you want to say something? 
Uh, did I? Okay. I, I just thought I didn't, that have, I didn't have my hands raised, but I, I did have a question. I, I don't know if it fits perfectly into the... So, uh, what, I, what I don't quite understand is um, what is the benefit of having these partitions be large areas? So, in other words, if you know that um, the biggest common allocation size is, say, two megabytes, right? Why, why is the the defragmentation scope not two megabytes, right? So if you want to allocate a THP, does it benefit from being next to other THPs? Or, you know, the, the, so the reason, I mean, it's a little facetious, but the reason I bring it up, right, is because the page allocator has this concept of page blocks. And we usually, we already try to um, defragment based on that. So if you, if you know the biggest allocations are two megabyte, why not just always defragment at the two megabyte level? So what's the benefit of having larger partitions? Because uh, we because do, we don't, right? We only know the minimum order. We don't know the maximum order. Or but we, we only I mean, set we can... the minimum order. We don't really set the maximum order. So there there's no um, at least currently there's no uh, restrictions to prevent anyone from uh, allocate, uh, at least in kernel space, a larger uh, compound page, right? Than the, right, but I mean, would it, would it be unreasonable to say you get up to X and everything beyond that is sort of best effort? Because it is anyway, right? With the If you do dynamic resizing, that might fail. So if your area is, is not big enough for whatever you're asking, it's already a best effort thing, right? If, if your area is, is 800 megabytes and you're asking for a gigabyte page, um, uh, you have to resize, which might fail because there's something in the way. Yes. Yes, if we don't do hard wall. So there are two options here. You can do hard wall and own kills, right? You can do auto resizing. So the two options here. If right. we are talking about auto resizing, yes. But there, there, this is just one of the two options uh, where, over here uh, it offers. So, I, I I think I understand what you're saying. You're asking, asking we, we, it can, is this system can be the best effort, can be a best effort, right? Yes, that's uh, one of the two options that it offers. It also can, here, uh, I think I list here, it also can provide guaranteed TCP coverage. So if we, let's say, disable auto resizing or we set a, a mean value, system mean global mean value here, right? Because auto resizing only uh, changes, only um, moves um, the uh, wall between mean and max. Right? If you say, I don't know how, uh, how, how much uh, THP uh, coverage would be optimal for my system, sure, I can set it to zero to 100%, which, you know, <laughs> doesn't really make sense. but. In general, we have some idea there, but not, it's not really accurate. Let's say, uh, I think probably one third, you know, one fifth, sure. I'll say between 10% and 50%, 50%. So the auto resizing would just do it between this, uh, within this range, right? And once you hit, you hit the min, then you're gonna uh, run into ohm kills. And uh, that means, uh, but the, the other side of the coin is that you still have at least 10, you still have a guaranteed 10% THP coverage there. Okay. But so um, would, would we expect distributions or, or you know, who, who sets them um, in max for these? If you, if you boot up a random system that, you know, with a generic distribution kernel. So uh, user space, just like, uh, you know, I think uh, we, we, we get it right too some uh, rabbit hole there. So just like a memory usage. So I, I would ask the same question here. Who, who, who could set the limit? Of course, the user space. Because we, we, we can't know everything. The kernel cannot know everything, right? But uh, that doesn't mean we, um, at least in my opinion, we should not provide an option for the user space to set it. So the same. Just thinking along the um, lines of who uh, set who sets the uh, memory limit for a memory C group. Oh, go ahead. 
Uh, there's one thing I can show. Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay, here. Actually, uh, not, like we are using the best effort service. Like uh, we set a, a conservative number for, for the partition of tower or something like uh, dedicated page, block, page blocks. And then even that, sometimes we can see like memory pressure in, in the other partition, I mean, the, uh, not the tau partition, just the, the, or the zero partition. But in this case, usually we are running like a, a multimedia or graphics. At that time, actually it's quite safe to just uh, add to the multimedia or graphics memory allocation. Now with the multifolio partition, I mean, the uh, tau zone, like uh, actually, like it's basically DMA buffer in Android case. Like they are actually allocating unmovable large order memory, like uh, order larger than four or sometimes five. So actually it's quite safe to just uh, borrow the memory from the uh, new partition. Actually, it doesn't create uh, like fragmentation. So it's even safer than just uh, order zero movable memory. Yeah, so so basically after we use this, like uh, that's the unmovable large folio allocation can like borrow the new partition, actually we basically resolve the problem. So yeah, that's something, that's what I want to share. Uh, I think that's Barry? Yes. Thank you. So um, I, I don't want to get back to uh, Shakil's question, which uh, is a really good one. So the default behavior should always be compatible with the existing behavior, which uh, meaning mean would be zero, max would be 100%. Right? Okay. Basically, you're not using this at all. Okay. And uh, do you have any idea like? The, the, for the perm MCG one, what do you expect the hierarchical semantics or? What? F for the perm MCG? Uh -huh. uh, do you ha have any idea what will should be the hierarchical semantics of this min max limit? Like the parent has some min max, what should be the, like? So, um, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't really, because uh, we haven't, uh, we, we are planning to start an experiment in our data centers um, in Q3. And uh, uh, we plan to set, because we, you know, we use Borg, right? Our data center use Borg. So we have a uh, um, tier one job that's uh, uh, latency sensitive jobs. And we also have bank jobs, which call uh, latency uh, tolerant jobs. So I plan to, you know, uh, set, make sure when, let's say, T T partition is under pressure, we reclaim from tier two jobs first, low priority jobs first. If that's just not gonna work, we uh, own kill, right? Similarly for the forking partition, we would do the same. I don't know how, I think this, this is a very good plan, but I cannot guarantee it anything because I probably have some data to share with you guys um, uh, by the time of plumbers. This is all uh, mostly on paper, not me. Because as I said, you know, we do have some results, but the local benchmarks, which I don't, as I said, I only take uh, grand thought. So, uh, um, let, uh, let me get back to a previous question uh, regarding like the sizing and like mm -hmm. uh, how do you configure and everything. And I mean, as the maintainer of memory hot block, if you're using memory hot block, memory hot unblock, you're doing something wrong. Um, so my question would be, can something similar be achieved using page blocks, which can be easily converted without too much hassle, where we extend the existing approach, for example, having page blocks that have, I don't know, a minimum order until you run into some kind of memory pressure, all of this. Uh, and of course, there, there is like the big, big question in the room, like how are we ever gonna handle THPs that are one gigabyte in size and I think I argued before that mm -hmm. we shouldn't try to solve the problem right now by using new zones and all of hey, that I complexity. 
Wasn't that Talakwata Zoom? <laughs> what, what was it? Got you there. Yeah, but I mean partition. So, um, are you looking into using page blocks? Because I, uh, you, I did. Yeah, I because you I used actually, memory hot block unblock. You used it, so you leaked I, I, your secret of zones. I, I, I I'm did. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You tried to hide it, but you didn't. So manage. I think uh, you cannot use page blocks because they don't have separate free lists. So you cannot restrict what page blocks you get free pages from. But that, that could be extended, right? I can help you answer uh, yeah, the, return, yeah, if you... the return on investment on, uh, from using page blocks. This page blocks actually is first in tried a few years ago. And it's now, I, I think I posted uh, a uh, deck on the mailing list, but uh, we, I, I think we're out of time, but we, we can discuss this offline. So we did try page blocks, not just, we actually, and OPPO, we tried page blocks independently. I didn't know they did that work. So they also shared their work. So uh, both our conclusions are um, just complicated. So, cause yeah, but, but what, what you're is proposing is, 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 I mean, mm -hmm. as somebody working for distribution, giving that to a customer on an arbitrary size system with, I don't know, 10 NUMA nodes whatsoever, nobody can manage that complexity. You don't want to have random memory onlining, offlining. I mean, you you spell it out here: hot removal plug, mm -hmm. what whatever it is. It is not just like a a quick conversion that can ideally be handled within the system in some kind of audit tuning, and that's what I don't like about this approach. It might be suitable. Like I I have an Android phone and I know it has eight gigabytes of memory. I'm gonna set it up once, good. But for all of the other systems that would like to use THPs and everything, which are servers. Mm -hmm. um, I don't see a pass forward un unless you like Google and you, you run your standardized, I don't know, cloud hosting with identical servers. Like for our customers in, in RHEL, I have no idea how, how you would convince them to enable it, tune it, get what you want. I, I don't understand why, I think we are facing the same problem, right? I'm not sure why we um, cannot tune it. Uh, I mean, it's very cannot, easy uh, if you sell one million types of phones, you know exactly your workload, you configure it once and you're done compared to, I don't know, having somebody who uses VFIO where you suddenly, I don't know, 90% of your memory is unmovable because it gets long-term pinned and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So then uh, let me get back to um, this, on this. So how your customers, how would your customers set memory limits? So, uh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Uh -huh. So, so I understand now. When you said page blocks, you meant migrate types, actually, because Sounds that that's what distinguishes page blocks, and those have separate uh, free lists. An extension of that. Or, or I think Johannes uh, sent recently some page mi uh, migrate type hygiene, but I think it was only a first step of. Uh, of further work that should lead to a similar, better THP allocation. So, so maybe that's yeah, so, another. Um, if, if if you wanted to uh, check the uh, check the um, the history on that, so um, um, a while ago I sent an RFC called um, Reliable Huge Page Allocator, and um, and so the migrate type hygiene. So you know people reviewed it, and I was asked to like split certain things out and make the series smaller. So. Um, the migrate type hygiene stuff, like tightening up when we do fallbacks and that kind of stuff, and avoid type mixing. Um, that's that's lined up for uh, six ten or seven zero or whatever Lena's going to call it. Um, but it's not the full thing. So what's missing is basically um, um, changing the allocator reclaim and compaction to always maintain free memory and full page blocks. Mm -hmm. And so what that gives you, right, is that the you know Regardless of what order you're allocating, if you're allocating smaller order zero, order one, you're still carrying the cost of defragmentation, right? So the externality of small allocations fragmenting large blocks, right, is taken care of because everybody has to carry that burden. Um, the other advantage it gives you is that um, um, fallbacks in general become really unlikely because there's always a neutral, neutral full page block available. Um, so I, my my intuition is that you know making allocations up to two megabytes in that case or 
up to page blocks is is going to work for you know 99% of users and then everything you get beyond that right higher order allocations 1 gigabyte stuff right i think that's that's interesting to only a very small amount of of people so i i think it goes to what david was saying right it would it would it wouldn't be great if the majority of users who don't care about large allocations than that would have to go through the trouble of having to configure or live with the dynamic resizing overhead and that kind of stuff. Right? They just they just want t up to THP. Everything else is kind of optional. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, very good points. So also, uh, I, I think we're out of time, but let me just uh, rest. So um, I'll post the deck. So probably you know. Um, if you're interested, you can just uh, look at the way it works in the development history. So I want to touch one more point here. So we do have a long-term version here, which um, includes um, backing uh, huge uh, TLB with this and um, supporting uh, YGB uh, THPs here. So. Um, we, uh, I, we I, I did have uh, something here called defrag. Basically, um, it's a it's a page blocked uh, alternative we uh, explored, and uh, but um, I I do think um, the um, let's say let me just say Zoom uh, Zoom based and page block based they both have uh, pros and cons. I think, but neither of them is ideal. Ideally, the data structure here should be an interval tree, right? That gives us the uh, uh, most flexibility. But um, that's what I also tried to, to use. But uh, that, that just uh, basically, as I, as I just mentioned here, it's a rewrite of the page allocator, just too much work. And uh, if you want to make um, progress, I, I do think, or incremental changes, I do think uh, Zone is uh, the best approach, again, my opinion. Because uh, it's, this, it's not just uh, the partition itself. It also involves other parts of the kernel that uh, build heavily on zones or rely on zones. They reclaim, right? And PSI, memory pressure, those things. Because we would have to support uh, reclaim zone um, page block. We would have to consider page blocks in reclaim. We would have to try to um, uh, see uh, how we can you um, send user space different um, PSI singles on different uh, page blocks, right? So that's also why Opal's um, page block base uses dual IRU. Why? Because we already have, uh, we, the, the, the Reclaim already is aware of uh, zones, uh, but they use page blocks. So they have to create a separate IRU to have uh, uh, the large folios um, uh, on a separate RU because let's say you want to allocate a large volume, right? You start scanning RU. You. you don't have separate RU. You could, you could reclaim a bunch of 4K pages, but the, the next one, after you reclaim 5, 12, 4K pages, there's still no guarantee you get THP to make THP. And then you stop scanning. The next one right there actually is a THP, code to make THP. If, you, if that one was in the, uh, at the tail, which the front, okay. You could just reclaim that one and then free that TP and then reallocate it immediately. So there are, multi, uh, there are multiple uh, considerations because I don't want to be uh, too overwhelming. So we considered, uh, if, uh, you, if uh, you know, anyone interested, I can talk about our page block uh, approach there. And we are more, uh, in my opinion, okay, again, this is very powerful, but this is too much work. Can we conclude we are running into lunch? Yeah, sorry. So that's all I want to talk about. I want to talk, I have only two more uh, slides here. So um, so we tried uh, how we uh, really did uh, arrive at this um, pro proposition and the conclusion. Basically, we tried a bunch of uh, uh, random hacks to reduce system-wide fragmentation. Then we tried to do uh, isolate fragmentations between MC groups because you know we have different uh, types of jobs, uh, low priority, high priority, right? And we tried the page blocked approach. So the third one is what I'm talking about at all. We also have an uh, ongoing research project, which is Tetris, try to you know, predict uh, lifetimes of, of mobile allocations. 
So I, I list all the links here. I'm going to post this uh, deck on the mailing list. So you can just click on the links and uh, see uh, other uh, related uh, works. Thank you, everyone.